Today I want to show you how I use the Newfangled Audio Equivocate plugin that you may have not seen used before in this way. And Newfangled Audio Equivocate is such a amazing plugin that has a match EQ curve that you don't see on a lot of EQ plugins out there. Even the most expensive plugins like Kirchhoff EQ, there's not a match EQ on there, which Maybe a future update will have, but currently it does not. So to show you how I use Newfangled Audio Equivocate, this is what I first do. So pretend this is your mix bus. This track right here is your mix bus. And for the sake of this demonstration, I have that on this channel here. So I would load up an instance of Equivocate because I want to EQ my mix bus. Right now, as Equivocate is fresh out of the box, there's nothing set. And I want to show you what I do first before I, I even use the plugin. I will deactive activate the plugin. I will boost the range all the way up to plus 24. And before you hit match EQ, we need to side chain it. Before you side chain it, we need to have a highly custom pink noise profile. On here, I have a channel called Pink. I also in Studio One have a stored FX chain called Pink that loads up all the plugins I need to create my Pink Noise custom EQ profile. When it does that, it automatically is turned on from Studio One uh, stock tone generator, which is all you need in your DAW. Most DAWs will have one. So you have tone generator at Pink Noise, definitely not White Noise. And then I have it down by 8 dB because I don't want to blast my ears when I turn that on. I actually have this in this example, which is what you would want to do anyways. You have this routed to a bus that's muted so that this channel remains open. So the side chain on the newfangled equivocate will match is going to be matching to audio. Otherwise, if you mute this, then this will have nothing to pick up from here. So what I do is I route this to a bus and then mute the bus. However, in Studio One, you could also have your side chain pre-fader and then pull the fader all the way down. It doesn't really matter how you do it. The reason I do this is because sometimes I wanna hear the uh, pink noise. And for purpose of demonstration, here's white noise. That just about cut your ears in half. This is regular pink noise without doing any of my custom EQ to it. See how warm and nice it sounds, but that's still not perfectly for most audio and songs out there on the radio. That's not what they sound like. They don't, they don't actually EQ everything to sound like pink noise. What they do is what I think sounds the best is this highly customized EQ. So if I, show you what that looks like, you might think of, wow, this is really weird looking, but I'll explain it. Why am I cutting 8 dB at zero to 100 hertz? Well, this is why. So most audio doesn't actually have a ton of sub in it. It's definitely there and it's audible and it's present. But when you listen to most music out there, if you were to look at a plotted frequency graph, it will show around 100 hertz that there's plenty of information there, but it's a, a gradual slope. This looks like a steep, but it's actually a very gradual slope from 100 down to 0 hertz. And on a spectrum analyzer, let's go ahead and keep this plugin open. Uh, the spectrum analyzer will show that this is actually not such a steep curve. So even if I exaggerate the range by squishing it here, you'll actually see that from zero to a hundred, it's not that much of a DB difference. We're at minus mm, 27, 26, and we're going down to about minus 40. So that's what, 13 DB swing, it's not huge. And then we're going at about the same up here at around 10K before it tails off, which you can see on this EQ profile here. That's what I do there because otherwise you will have really sharp highs and you don't need that. You want EQ on your mix bus to be as naturally smooth as possible. So I've loaded up a track here just so you can see that this pink noise here does sound a lot different. Um, if you were to hear the normal pink noise versus this pink noise, let me show you what that sounds like. This is pink noise that I have 
EQ'd. And this is the pink noise that you would hear from your normal tone generator. So yeah, it's a lot warmer sounding, but it, it sounds dark to me, but that, that right there sounds about how most music would sound like on a good system. And also this translates to all the other systems very well. So on any system, this EQ will still sound full, uh, lots of body, not too sharp in the top end. And I'll prove that. So while I have this going, this pink noise, even though you can't hear it, this instance of newfangled audio equivocate is going to register this pink noise and this will influence what your mix bus needs to do to change the mix bus EQ to sound like that pink noise spectrum uh, that we just customized. If you want this preset, by the way, let me know and I will gladly share all of these numbers here if you can't screen grab this. So now we get to the part where we are actually editing or uh, matching the EQ to the pink noise. What I do is I make sure active is off, range is at 24, and before I hit match EQ, let's go to a section of the uh, song where we're at the chorus, uh, beginning of the chorus, and we'll play probably about 25, 30 seconds. That gives uh, Equivocate enough time to then grab all the audio that it needs and start to EQ change it. So for example, let me show you what that sounds like. So we make sure it's not active and we hit play. And you see it's not doing anything. <laughs> That's because I didn't sidechain it yet. So in Studio One, it's really easy how sidechains work. You activate the sidechain, you choose which channel you want the sidechain information to come from. We will choose pink because I labeled this pink and that's where my pink noise is. But then you see it automatically adds a send, which is a sidechain send. And that's going to this plugin here, which is right here. And now when we play the audio, we will be able to match the EQ. As soon as I hit match EQ again, now it's not active and it's not matching any more EQ. So I could play the song over and over again. It won't change anything on here, which is great. The range now we can turn this down. So we, I usually like to start at around nine. And what that does is see how it's only adding about three and a half dB here and three dB at the top. And then it's adding about two dB in the subs, pulling out about a one and a half dB at about 900 Hertz, adding about half a dB at 670 Hertz. So what this is doing is trying to make this mix sound like my customized EQ curve. And we're basically kind of, this is almost like a blend knob, not really, it's, it's, it's a range blend knob. So we're taking the 24 dB range and we're pulling back all the values of these with still keeping the same curve. Now it's just less exaggerated. So by doing that, we are essentially reducing the amount of this EQ correction curve being applied to the mix bus. So what that'll sound like back and forth, you'll hear at the beginning, this is with it off, and then I'll stop it, go back to the beginning and turn it on. And you may not hear a difference, but you will when I bypass it quickly. So here, this, here, this is what it sounds like raw. Now you'll hear it with it on. I noticed that there's a little bit of low end boosted, but that's because I know that I, I can see that here. To hear that actually in effect, let's go ahead and turn this on and off and hear the audio back and forth. Still 
see how it changes the audio without completely erasing the work that you've done to create your mix bus. But at the same time, if your mix doesn't sound right and the EQ curve on the pink noise is how it should sound, generally speaking, then e Equivocate will basically have a very changed, uh, it won't look like this, but it'll have a very drastic cut and boost where it's showing you, hey, I, I have a serious problem here between 500 and 1500 hertz. It's, it should be more like this. Right now, it's looking like this. And this will show you, this is what you need it to be. Uh, but we're having to do this to the audio to make it sound like that. But that's the beauty of this plugin. You could use it as a final EQ fix on Mixbus, kind of like what Gullfoss does, even though that's dynamic and it's completely different. What Gullfoss is doing is it's, it's changing the signal to sound what the theoretical flat frequency response should sound like. And because of my custom EQ curve right here on the pink noise, this is how I, f in my opinion, this would sound the flattest and most balanced, I shouldn't say flat, it should be the most balanced song if you match it to this curve. But the range doesn't need to be at 24. I just start out like that and then I pull it back. And yeah, that's the trick that I use for Newfangled Audio Equivocate. Hope that that helps and you get something out of it. And take this what you will, change it up, do whatever you want with this information. Make your own EQ curve if you don't think mine sounds good enough for you. And if you like this, awesome. Share it with your friends. If not, tell them how much I suck. And I'll greatly appreciate that. So until next time, thank you for joining and tuning in.